The United States government is greatly disrespecting our president-elect. But before we get into that issue, our president-elect, President William Samoy Ruto, has received a number of congratulatory messages from other world leaders on the world stage. And I would like to highlight those just briefly before we head on over to what is going on between the United States and Kenya. Now, number one on that list is Julius Selo Malema, who's a South African member of parliament and commander-in-chief of the Economic Freedom Fighters, popularly known as the EFF. Uh, let's hear from the man himself. On Ruto, as the EFF, we congratulated him, and we think that uh, the Kenyans must accept uh, the results. It is what it is. Uh, with highly contested elections and with such an outcome, uh, which is very close, you are likely to have people who are not satisfied. It comes with the nature of the game. But Kenyans must prioritize Kenya and must protect Kenya and must protect democracy. They must love their country more than loving individuals uh, because we cannot destroy a country on the basis of this or that individual who hasn't won uh, elections. Shem Odinga has been trying. I think it's time for him to uh, throw a towel and try a different candidate. Perhaps there could be a different outcome, but this is the fifth time it can be done beyond this. He needs to accept and uh, uh, move on. Number two on the list is Ruto's very good friend, President Yoweri Museveni. President Yoweri Museveni had this to say, On behalf of all Ugandans, I congratulate William Ruto. Father, to my telephone call last night upon your victory, I wish to reassure you of Uganda's commitment and continued partnering with Kenya. Number three was Abi Ahmed, the Prime Minister of Ethiopia. He said, My congratulations to William Ruto on your election as the President of the Republic of Kenya. I wish you best of luck in your endeavors ahead and we look forward to working closely with you on common bilateral and regional interests. Number four was Cyril Ramaphosa, the sitting president of South Africa. He said, I offer my warm congratulations to President-elect William Ruto of the Republic of Kenya. A prosperous and united Kenya is an important prerequisite for and contributor to a prosperous and peaceful continent. We look forward to working with you in pursuit of the Africa we want. Now, there are so many messages that have come in. Because of time, I'll just mention the others briefly. Uh, there's Zimbabwe's president, Emerson Mnangangwa. Uh, there's Somalia's president, Mohamed Farmajo. And quite a few other presidents have acknowledged William Ruto. And we are grateful to them uh, for following the diplomatic norms of the international system. Now, the United States is a very strange country. Every other country or state, if you will, has issued a congratulatory message to President-elect William Ruto, either through a direct phone call from their head of state or through a message from their state house. But the United States chose to congratulate President-elect William Ruto through their embassy. Now, this is very strange. I'll have the statement on your screen just now. Here's what the United States Embassy in Kenya said in brief. The U.S. Embassy congratulates the people of Kenya for exercising their right to vote in the August 9 election. We commend the active participation of Kenya's political parties, civil societies, and citizens in shaping robust discussions throughout the campaign period. Long story short, what they're basically saying is congratulations, President-elect William Ruto. Now, there's a number of questions that I would like us to answer together. Question number one. Why is the U.S. using its embassy to congratulate President-elect William Ruto? Number two, why is Joe Biden's White House, which is located at 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue, Washington, D.C., not organizing for a phone call between the two leaders, or at the very least to put out a statement from the White House to our President-elect? What is the job of the press secretary? Is it just to go and talk to the press corps? I personally believe there's much more behind that move. But before we talk about that, I would just like to urge you to head on over to YouTube, subscribe to my channel at David Ofula. That's if you're watching from a different platform. If you're already on YouTube, it's as simple as hitting the sub button and 
you'll be getting more content like this. So um, on to the issue of the day or the matter at hand. Why is America using their embassy? They're the only country, they're the only nation doing this to Kenya and to our president-elect. Personally, I believe that there are, are two reasons. Reason number one is that at the helm of power in the United States of America, we are having Democrats. What issues do we know as per now that Democrats hold near and dear? That would be abortion rights and gay rights. And these two things are not very much on the basket of important matters as far as William Ruto is concerned. And he had this to say. Taifa la Kenya ni taifa linalo mcha mungu. Hatuna nafasi kwa washoga na wale wengi. Na hii ni taifa ambayo sote tunakubali kila mtu wa shiriki katika imani yake lakini maneno ya kusema ya kwamba ushoga itaendelea katika taifa hii hiyo haiwezekani and in william ruto's defense it's not just him even his former boss president uru kenyatta also had this to say is that something that you aspire to for your country i want to be very clear uh, uh, this year uh, there is i will not engage in a subject that is of no it, uh, it, it is not of any major importance to the people and the Republic of Kenya. This is not an issue, as you would want to put it, of um, human rights or this. This is an issue of society, of our own base as a culture, as a people, regardless of which community you come from. This is not acceptable. This is not agreeable. This is not about Uhuru Kenyatta saying yes or no. This is an issue that the people of Kenya themselves, who have bestowed upon themselves a constitution, right, after several years, have clearly stated that this is not a subject that they are willing to engage in, yeah, at this time and moment. In years to come, possibly long after I'm president, who knows? Maybe our society will have reached a stage where those are issues that people are willing, freely and open to discuss. I have to be honest with you. And that is the position that we have always maintained. So I suspect that an intelligence report was put together and brought to the President of the United States, President Joe Biden. And in that intelligence report, I'm pretty sure they highlighted that President William Ruto does not care. Uh, just a moment, there's a few military helicopters flying over. They really need to change the, this flight path from above this home. <laughs> Alright, so as I was saying, I suspect that an intelligence report was done on our president-elect and it was handed over to President Joe Biden and it clearly stated that President-elect William Ruto does not really hold the same social values as you do or as your party does. So for President Joe Biden to congratulate William Ruto directly, it might not have sat well with his Democrat party. And I'm very sure if Donald Trump was at the helm of power, this message would have come in ages ago and not through the embassy. But perhaps my reasoning is a bit limited. I'd really love to hear what you have to say. So just comment below. Why do you think the United States is choosing to use its embassy and not all directly or issue a statement from the White House? I'd really love to hear what you have to say. I really do. Now, uh, as I close the video, once again, I'd just like to remind you, subscribe to my channel at David Ofula on YouTube. Uh, you'll be getting a ton more of such content. So um, thank you so much, guys. I wish you all a great day. Adios.